All right, today we have more fun with circles. Um, today we're going to be thinking about a more complex problem, and I gave students a chance to play with this problem to see what, could they, could, what they could figure out with something based on some of the tools that we already have. So one of the tools that we developed yesterday was uh, a recognition that there's a proportional relationship between the diameter and the circumference of a circle. And that's re that relationship provides us with an equation, well, multiple equations that you could use to relate the two. Um, and I'm going to show you visually what that would look like. This was the practice check from today. And I went over the practice check in class because having an understanding of how to use these tools is then helpful for the problem that students were approaching later. So just making sure we understand the relationship between the radius and the diameter of a circle. We have a radius of a circle that's 7, and I want to know what is the diameter and how do you know. So we've got our circle. A radius is the distance from the center to the boundary of the circle. And we know that that is 7 centimeters. The diameter goes all the way across. So the diameter is the same as having two radii. If you have two radii, 7 centimeters and 7 centimeters, the diameter is going to be 14 centimeters. It doubles the radius. Now on the other hand, if you want to make a circle that has a diameter of 10 inches, I want to know what you need to do with your compass's measurement, or do with your compass in order to make that. And this takes us back to yesterday, where we learned how to make a compass work the way we want it to work. So you've got your circle, and you know that you want to end up, or you want your circle, to end up with a diameter of 10 inches. But we know that our compass marks off the center and the boundary of the circle, so that is in effect making the radius of that circle. If we have a diameter of 10, we're going to need to cut that in half and end up with 5 inches so that when you swoop or rotate the compass around, you'll end up with 10 inches going all the way across that circle. And finally, the relationship between the diameter and the circumference. Yesterday we realized that with that proportional relationship, the constant of proportionality was pi and that if you have the diameter and multiply it by pi for any circle, you'll end up with the circumference. Well, pi is approximately, though not exactly, 3.14. And 3.14 is approximately, though greater than, 3. So if I want to just assess, is something reasonable, I could use 3 as a basic approximation of pi. If I have a diameter of 5 meters, and I do 5 times 3, I would end up with a circumference that should be around, although a little greater than 15. If I have a diameter of 19, and I multiply that by 3, I should end up with a circumference that is around, but probably a little, but greater than 57 inches. And doing the same with my 33 centimeter diameter, I should end up with about 99, a little bit more, for my circumference. Looking at the options here, 5 meters and 27 meters, 27 is way too far away. That's almost double the 15 meters that it should be. So that I cannot chalk that up to measurement discrepancy. That does not seem reasonable. 33 times 3 is also much larger than it should be. Well, not is on the other hand, much larger than it should be. 50 centimeters is only about half of what the circumference should actually be if you have a diameter of 33. So I can cut out... 33 centimeters and 50 centimeters as a diameter and circumference possibility. Last, that le leaves me with B, 19 inches. If I end up with a 57 inch circumference, that is close to, not exactly, but close to 60 inches. And in fact, it should be even closer than 57 because pi is greater than 3. So B would be a reasonable diameter and circumference estimate based off of what we know about the relationship between the diameter and circumference of a circle. So now we want to put this together. We've got a picture frame to make. And in true nerd style, I need you to make a plan before you cut and start putting together your picture frame. I want to know how much wire are you going to need so that you can make those loops, those wire loops that go around the picture. I'm only interested in everything that is the black loops because that is what would be wire here. How can I figure out how much I need? Well, we're giving two pieces of information. We're given the two dimensions of the rectangular picture that we need to wrap around. We know that it's 8 inches wide, and we know that it's 10 inches tall. And working with that, some students came to, the un uh, came to a realization. They said that if you need to be 8 inches across, and you, looking at these, see that you've got some half circles and three-quarter circles, 
if you have eight inches, you have one, two, three diameters, and then they noticed those two radii on the end, those actually are another diameter right there. So those four diameters together need to make eight inches. They played with numbers, they noticed two inches would work. Because if you do two plus two plus two, plus another one and one, or two for that those corner pieces, you're going to end up with eight inches. And if we apply that now to the side and check, oh, it works down, down the ten inch side as well. Two plus two plus two plus two for all of our half circles, and then one plus one for those circle pieces in the corner, that's going to take us to 10 inches. So each circle has a diameter of 2 inches. I'm interested in finding what's around the circle though, because I want to know the wire that I need to loop around. This is like asking for a perimeter around a shape, and in the case of a circle, that perimeter is the circumference. So how can I calculate the circumference of these circles, and how many circles do I actually have? I don't have any full circles. But if I count along the sides and I count along the top and bottom, I realize I have 14 half circles. Four on either side, three on the top and the bottom. Excuse me, six on the top, on, uh, three on each of the top and the bottom, six total. Those 14 half circles, if I put those together, would be the same as having seven whole circles. Then looking in the corner, I have four corner pieces. Each of those corner pieces is a three-quarters circle. So I have four three-quarters circles. And if I put those together, perhaps I take one of them and split it into um, qu quarters that I can add into the other ones, I'll end up with three whole circles. So around this picture, I have seven circles and three circles, or ten total circles of wire that I would need. So I have ten circles. And I know that each circle has a diameter of 2 inches. So I have all the information that I need to know how much wire would be required to go around those 10 circles. Like we talked about during the practice check, the circumference is the same as the diameter times pi. In this case, that's going to be approximately 6.28 inches, because it's approximately 2, well, it's 2 times approximately 3 and 14 hundredths. And if I have 10 of those, and I do 6.28 times 10, then I'm going to need 62 and 8 tenths of an inch of wire. And if I wanted to be safe, given that pi is greater than 3.14, maybe I would want 63 inches or 64 inches to be really, really safe. So with a problem like this, I'm really interested in seeing how can you reason flexibly. How can you use different things that you know about? We have people who are reasoning about what they know about rectangles, composing and decomposing circles, putting them together and taking them apart, using some of those uh, relationships that we've discovered this week about diameter, radius, circumference, and putting all of that together to see if you can apply it to something where you need to make sure that you end up with the right amount of something. It's important to be precise. Going around it with a ruler would be challenging. It's more efficient if you can come up with ways like this so that you can measure it as exactly as possible.